What you're looking at here is a small form factor build featuring a 7950X and an RTX 4090 crammed inside an NR200P. In this video, I'm going to compare this build in terms of performance and noise to my fully custom water cooled 909 UK featuring the exact same specs and using the exact same memory kit. And we will take a look at noise, max boost clock on the loop in this system. It is running two uh, 480 radiators. One of them is a 480 XE, which is 60 millimeters wide. One of them is a 480 GTS, which is 25 millimeters wide. There is a high flow sensor in there. As you can see, my water temp is 26.1 degrees idle and my flow rate is 175 liters per hour. And um, the pump is running at 100. I do have two pumps in here. Um, one of them is not hooked up at the moment uh, because I need to take it out. It has some issues. But um, they're essentially the pumps are running in parallel. So it's not really, I mean, it's not parallel. I mean, running in serial. So it doesn't really make a difference here. But um, you can see my fan speeds are adjusted by water temperature. Uh, the fan, the two fans on each set of rads are mirrored. So you can see my max fan speed is 75%. Um, I'm not too sure how often it actually gets to that, but uh, we'll see. So I'll try to keep the water temperature up. And uh, when I do the noise, so we can get an idea of how much more beneficial this is compared to that small SFX kit. Here's a Cinebench run on the 909 EK, the fully water-cooled system. As you'll notice, I pretty much maintain an average of about 5.1 gigahertz across all cores. Some a little slower, some a little faster. And I ended up with a score of 37,512. As some of you may not be aware, for Ryzen, the chips all go to 95 degrees Celsius, and depending on your cooling is kind of how well your clock boost will go. Um, this is on PBO, same for the small SFX system. There's no manual overclocking or voltage adjustment of any kind. And here's the run with the SFX build. Um, I did notice that if you look at the overall clock speed, on some of the cores, it was dramatically slower uh, than my average clock speed on the fully water-cooled system. With that said, um, before we get to the section of noise, I did notice that I could audibly hear this PC as it was running this. Not so bad, but compared to the water-cooling system, which was pretty much the same volume the entire time, this was definitely noticeable. And I ended up with a score of 35,976, which is still very respectable. Obviously, this is PB only, and there is some type of silicone lottery element to this, right? So if you had a better CPU, perhaps this would have scored a little bit better. But both uh, systems are running the same G-Skill memory kit. So there's no memory type of advantages on one over the other. Looking at the times by extreme results, you'll notice the fully water-cooled system scored about 540 points higher than the SFX system. Now, this is not so much due to the GPUs. Both GPUs maintained a boost speed of about 3,000 megahertz and a little bit under. Um, but the real differentiator was really just during the CPU portion of the test, where obviously the fully water-cooled system boosted higher. One of the concerns obviously is going to be noise in comparison. So what I'm going to do is I have a decibel meter pointed 8 inches away from the rad side of the case, as you can see. I will do the same for the rad side on the small SFX. And I'm going to run ADA64 with GPU and CPU. Okay, no FPU stress because I'm not checking for temps. Uh, that's going to stress it no matter what. Um, I'm just going to start this way. I have 100% CPU usage, 100% GPU usage. And then I'll leave this running for about 20 minutes and we'll see what the changes are. So right now, if you look at the decibel meter on the system, it just started. Okay, so it's 46 baseline. So I'll let this run for 20 minutes. At the end of 20 minutes, it should be at the hottest it's going to be uh, within that 20 minutes. So I'll come back and restart and take a look when it's at 20 minutes. Uh, it's been a little over 20 minutes now. Um, I can hear the system a little bit. Uh, if I'll shut up right now and check the decibel meter. Okay, it's reading about 50.5, 50.7. 
Um, it's not much of a difference than when it was idle. And that's pretty much where one of the big benefits of having a custom loop come to. So let's see what the SFX sounds like. Now it's time to repeat the ADA stress test I was doing before. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna stress the FPU, just GPU and uh, CPU. I'm gonna stress it to 100%. I'll let it run for 20 minutes. I, I think pretty much it'll max out at that point. And uh, I have again, the decibel meter is, scroll down here, the decibel meter is eight inches away from the rad facing side. Um, I'll take a baseline of it right now, where it's doing nothing. It's at 44.3, I'll let it run. And then when I come back, it should be as warm as it's going to be while it's still running because 20 minutes would have passed. I'll check what that maximum is. And this is the worst case scenario, all right? This is literally something you're never gonna be able to do for the most part, which is 100% CPU, 100% GPU. Okay, so it's not even realistic unless you do really, really heavy rendering. Even really heavy rendering is more GPU bound. So let's see where it goes. So we're coming up near 20 minutes. Um, I'm also capturing this output um, starting from the eight minute mark uh, and a little bit before that. And I noticed by the time it was eight minutes, it was already hitting its thermal equilibrium. It wasn't going to go up anymore. It wasn't gonna go any less. Um, obviously, as you know, these dies are, they're gonna hit 95. It's only the clock speed that's gonna change um, because that's their design. So obviously my CPU has been packed in 92, 93, the package the entire time. And my CPU, I'm sorry, my GPU has been at 70.4 uh, for, it's just pretty much you can tell is a flat line. All right, um, so with that said, I, if you notice my GPU fan is only at 54%. So technically this could be cooler if you wanted it to be louder. So how loud is it? So if we come down to the decibel meter, uh, let me turn it back on again. It seems time off every now and then. It's, if I shut up, it's at 52, right? So that is, I think eight decibels higher than when it was, you know, idle. Um, so it is audible, but it's not that loud to be honest. Um, so with that said, it's pretty impressive. We've seen the temps. Um, I'm just gonna show you the inside real quick. Uh, so if we look up here, it's actually quite messy in there. Um, I don't know how well this is gonna come across on camera, but there's not much room uh, pretty much everything is packed. You can still put two SSDs in the front, uh, which I will put eventually, uh, but I do have two NVMEs in there at the moment. Um, but yeah, so I had, when I had posted that with the Supreme, a photo of the system with the Supreme that I had to take out, I had used the cable mod adapter. If you use the cable mod SFX wires or you have a SFX that has a 16 pin, you don't even need the adapter. You can just use the wire straight out like I have here. So yeah. Um, a little more notes about when it was running earlier. Um, you definitely, the heat gets output real fast by this 280 IO right here. And, you know, like I said, I'm gonna run this for like just a month, just for shits and giggles. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it's totally viable. Um, I know a lot of folks that, you know, like if you're traveling around to LAN parties, this is definitely something you wanna consider. Um, just another quick note, I do have, and oops, I can just get this out here. All right, one second. I do have, I don't know, like guys lift the camera here. I do have a single 120 Noctua fan on top. Okay, just to help exhaust a little bit. Um, and this wire, obviously I need to, I need to make slack for pretty much. But yeah, with that said, uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.